Welcome to a special segment of Perspective with Moape. In this particular episode, I'm going to be addressing something that I think keeps a lot of people from learning to speak in public or at least speaking with some sort of ease. I encourage you to stay along for the video because it's going to be a fun one. The year was 2019. Everything changed. The world came face to face with a reality that changed the way that we live our lives forever. A global pandemic that affected every single person, whether young, old, woman, man, everybody heard about it. Although the world has done a good job learning and moving past what happened in the year 2019, I find that something remains today that a lot of people seem to have learned to live with but never have dealt with. Its symptoms are quite interesting. And I'm assuming once I share what these symptoms are, you'll begin to relate as to exactly what I'm talking about. Symptoms often look like the involuntary body movement, <laughs> The heavy breathing that accompanies this thing, the very real apparent lack of any sort of moisture, the dry mouth, you know, it's the shaking hands, it's the, it's the sweaty palms, and all of a sudden you're wondering whether or not you've actually closed the zip on your trousers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the buckling knees, it's, it's the horror stories that you envision not only while you're there, but also afterwards and even before. If you don't know by now, I'm talking about the very real fear of public speaking. You see, public speaking is something that a huge part of the world, a huge population, most of the world, if I may say, is afraid of. And I know sometimes when you hear somebody speak in a manner like the way that I do, or even perhaps have known me on a personal level, and you somehow think that this was a skill that I was born with, allow me to share my story. The year was 2011. In that year, everything changed. I still remember what that day was like for me. It happened to be a Monday, and I remember going on a school trip, leaving the premises of my then boarding school to be in town the whole day, only coming back somewhere around four in the afternoon. And I vividly recall as the bus was driving into the school premises, the picture of these young boys, because it was an old boys boarding school, right? These young boys waiting at the gate. The moment the bus started to drive in, people crowded the bus, hitting on the bus, shouting my name, celebrating me. And I was so confused as to what exactly was going on around me. It quickly dawned on me when the bus came to a final stop. People had been shouting, what beat that way, what beat that way? And I recall just thinking, I think it's finally happened. I've been elected and selected a prefect, which was a big deal in my boarding school. It means I had ascended to the ranks of the untouchables. I officially was one of those people who was allowed you know, certain privileges. I could punish people. I could dictate and change people's entire school simply by. And in that moment, that very real moment, I realized what these people had done. They had just given my fear of public speaking a full time contract to torment me. Yikes. You see, as a prefect, one of the responsibilities I had was to speak. That means I had to speak and make announcements in the dining hall. Whenever we had general gatherings, before cleaning programs, I had to speak. Although I had the power outwardly, I didn't have the power within me. And it took a long time and many years have sin since passed since my experience. And now I'm at this place in my life where I'm more confident, I'm more assertive, I enjoy speaking. And it's out of this desire and perhaps out of my truth that I wish to share some of the following tips, which I hope will be beneficial for you. The first one being simply something which I find is indispensable. 
You cannot go around it. You have to address this first. The word of God says this, as a man thinks, so is he. So the first step in attempting to have any type of courage, to have any type of confidence, to have any type of control over your own body as you speak, is to begin to view yourself as one who's already good at speaking. And I know that can be hard because history, memories, fears project these horror stories within our minds that the moment we get up there, our minds don't just go blank, they go black. <laughs> I mean, there's absolutely nothing there, just nothing. So I'll be, encourage you as a pro tip, first place you have to begin is to begin to see yourself as actually succeeding at this thing. Is begin to deal with those mindsets and those ideas of yourself that limit what you can do when you eventually get up in front of an audience. When you have this sinking feeling that you're probably going to fail, envision yourself not failing. When you have a memory that comes back and you can't seem to live past that memory because you failed in the past before, be reminded that failure is not who you are, but is a, it's an event that happened. And I think one of the best things that we can do is learn to move past them. Personally, I've had innumerable numbers of failures, of things that I'm very passionate about. I'm thankful that I had the grace to keep it going. I didn't stay stuck in the moment. And for the sake of this video, I won't dare to perhaps get into the deeper details of this, but I hope that begins to shape and at least enlighten you on a place that you need to address. And that is first, the mind. Because my personal conviction is that life is always lived from the inside out. So we're starting in the mind. Number two for me would be, first of all, to understand something that every person who speaks in public has come to understand. That the fear never goes away. It just doesn't. So what you're actually learning to do is manage your fear. That means you get so good at masking what's going on within you that people around you don't actually realize. And I was taken back a few days as I was preparing for this particular video. I was reminded of how nervous I got when I had to speak on the Google Meets. I remember everything within me, everything within me just started to go up in flames. My body temperature all of a sudden just felt, oh, Lord, help me. You know, my hands were shaking. All of a sudden, I didn't know where to start. And one of the things that I personally do just to recenter myself is I often employ pauses as I speak just to really bring myself back to the message at hand. I also like to ask questions to an audience and say, hey, what are you guys you know, doing, for example? You know, How's the day going? Those give me opportunities to come back to myself. That means I'm able to pace myself. And there are more devices and more things that I could speak on, but I'm sharing the things that for me, I have constantly and will continue to employ. So we looked at first the mind, and now we're actually busting a myth in the fact that it's not something that goes away. It's something you learn to manage. The last one for me, which I find is absolutely important, is practice, practice, practice. But I wouldn't encourage you to practice, practice, practice if you haven't yet addressed the first two. Because if you only have practice, you will continue to practice the things that haven't worked for you. So go back, employ the first two steps, and then come back to practice. Practice also entails you have to be prepared. That means I'm practicing what I've prepared. I'm speaking from a place of taking information in, and I'm practicing this information with the people that are around me, with myself. I'm visualizing this information. I'm getting familiar with the information. I am actually working out how I'm going to deliver the information. And finally, on that day, what this affords you is actually just speaking from a place of having already been to that place because you've been practicing so much that it's just coming out of you. So if you've watched this video all the way up until this point and are going to seriously not only take as a recommendation, but take these three simple steps as something you can apply to your life for your transformation. Perhaps history then will say of you, it was the year 2022. Everything for you has changed.